Danny, right? We're in the class on Daniel Webster and the college case together. What do you have there? Hey, it's Kayla, right? This is Daniel Webster's notebook and a copy of his notes from the Dartmouth College Supreme Court case 200 years ago. I'm hoping to use them to channel Webster's spirit. No way. I've always wondered what Webster said in his final argument, but there's no contemporaneous record of it. Hmm. All we have is a letter from Chauncey Goodrich to Rufus Choate 35 years later, purporting to quote portions of Webster's paration. Well, maybe if you get rid of that 21st century distraction, you'll have a better chance. Not my cell phone. Mm-hmm. OK, I guess I'll turn it off. If I can live without my cell phone, you can too. Please turn off your cell phones. If Webster were to come back, he would not appreciate getting distracted by cell phones and flash photography. Back in his day, all they had were quill pens and a good pair of ears. I can imagine how many quill pens Daniel Webster went through. Speaking in front of the Supreme Court for four hours with all of those notes, I just really wish I could hear those amazing oration skills out loud and really understand why Marshall ruled the way he did. I don't know if I would want to hear Webster speak for four hours, but I would like to hear his final paration. We just need to find someone to portray Daniel Webster. Someone who grew up in rural New Hampshire, went to Exeter, attended Dartmouth, and is a successful practicing lawyer. Where might we find such a fine fellow? What about that attorney? What about that attorney who's visiting from she and Finney Bass and Green, auditing our class? Tom Burak. He shares all of those things with, in common with Daniel Webster and would make a great Daniel Webster. He's the Perkins Bass Visiting Distinguished Visitor for the year. Tom Burak. Yes, he would make a great Daniel Webster. Now, all we have to do is imagine the setting and events leading up to his final argument. Every single word that Daniel Webster said made a difference in preserving Dartmouth College. I don't know if I could imagine what this place would be like if his words weren't persuasive. I don't think I would have gone to Dartmouth University. Duh. I'm sure you can imagine the dimly lit courtroom in Washington, D.C. The date is March 10th, 1818. The room is silent as everyone awaits Webster's final argument. Everything is at stake. Imagine the pressure and expectations. I think it's easier for me to imagine if I close my eyes, especially now since everyone's cell phones and cameras are off. Please join me in going back to a time when Daniel Webster's oratory skills sweep the nation. Close your eyes and imagine Daniel Webster. The stage is set for a son of Dartmouth to step forth and bring hope to the college. This, sir, is my case. It is the case not merely of that humble institution. It is the case of every college in our land. It is more. It is the case of every eleemosynary institution. All of those great charities founded by the piety of our ancestors to alleviate human misery and to scatter blessings along the pathway of life. It is more. It is the case, in some sense, of every man among us who has property of which he may be stripped 
For the question is simply this. Shall our state legislatures be allowed to take that which is not their own to turn it from its original use and to apply it to such ends and purposes as they in their discretion shall see fit? You may destroy this little institution. It is weak. It is in your hands. I know it's one of the lesser lights in the literary horizon of our country. You may put it out. But if you do so, you must carry through your work. You must extinguish one after another all of those great lights of science which for more than a century have thrown their radiance over our land. It is, sir, as I have said, a small college. And yet, there are those who love it. I, I know not how others may feel, but for myself. When I see my alma mater surrounded like Caesar in the Senate House by those who are reiterating stab upon stab, I would not, for this right hand, have her say to me, et tu, quoque, me fili, and thou too, my son. Sir, I rest my case.
Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, that was an incredible way to end, and that brings the symposium to a close. Thank you very much for coming.